All right. We just admit everybody. Has anyone ever hosted a meeting and figured out how to admit people without having to admit them manually? I imagine it's a setting, but I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Uh, yeah, Bill, I did that the other day with Stephanie and Kathy, and there was a button on the side that just said add a person. It was like a blue button. Add a person. Yeah, it was like add, and then it was like a little person icon. Okay, I'll look a little bit more for that. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Um, I got a request to do uh, a CMA session, and this is a, um, uh, a bit of a unique property, I imagine. Um, it's a pretty expensive property, um, but I want to walk you through um, kind of my mindset around um, how I would price a, a property essentially blind, okay? Um, I'm doing this for the first time. Uh, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I'm just being honest. Um, I'm going to share my screen again with you and then we will um, go through it together, okay? Now, I'm just going to do a, um, I'm just going to show you a bunch of things and kind of walk you through a number of different ways that I might price this particular piece of property, okay? So, a couple things. First of all, um, here is the address. It is uh, 5485 Claire Rose Lane. Okay. Let me do a little chat. Where's the chat on the screen? Okay, so Claire Rose Lane. So honestly, the first thing I'm going to do, and I know this sounds, ah, oh, you know, there was one, one other thing I wanted to talk about at the last session. I'm just going to say it here really fast. Um, did you guys see that, that little image I posted last night about all the major real estate company stocks being down anywhere from 20 to 40%? Yes, that was unbelievable. Okay, that's what happens when somebody else controls your company. Okay, plain and simple. Um, Remax is a publicly shared company. Uh, Coal Banker, Century 21, Better Homes and Gardens, ERA, they're all publicly traded companies as part of Rheology. Um, you guys, uh, it, it, it's unbelievable what happens. 40% drops in Rheology stock yesterday. Their, their market cap right now is like, barely 400 it's less than 400 million dollars by the way that's caldwell banker better homes and gardens era nrt which is the largest real estate um uh company by volume in the in the in the uh in the world i think it is um these are uh huge brands and their market cap is 300 million dollars that's unbelievable okay when you have a privately held company where you have no shareholders, guess who gets to make the decisions? Us, okay? So if you just lost a couple hundred million dollars in market cap overnight, do you think that's the kind of company that they can go drop a billion dollars on a tech platform? No. Does that make sense? Do I have all of you muted? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Donna. You don't know how lucky you are. Being at Keller Williams is is uh, is unbelievable. Um, all yeah, Compass just suspended their um, bridge loans, their concierge service. Um, uh, Redfin's not buying homes anymore. Zillow's not buying homes anymore, right? Who knows what will happen with iBuyers? It could be a thing of the past in a month or two. Okay. And when you have a faulty business plan, I've been saying this for years. When you have a faulty business plan, 
right? In a business model, all it takes is a little virus and the whole thing comes down, right? You wait till there's a shift in the marketplace, those people will be holding the bags on thousands and thousands and thousands of houses and billions and billions of dollars worth of inventory and they'll be losing money on every single one of them. And guess what? The investors don't like losing money, right? They like making money. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm off my soapbox now. All right, Claire Rose. First thing I would do, honestly, first thing I would do, as silly as it sounds, is I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna see exactly where it's at. I'm gonna see if there's any pictures. Um, I'm going to see, uh, honestly, I'm going to look at the tax records. The tax records have a, um, uh, a, a value estimator. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at the red fins and the Zillows and all those places to see what are they saying, right? Are they saying 250, 275, 260, 350, whatever the number is. I'm just going to just, I'm just doing casual research at this moment, right? I'm not suggesting they're accurate. I'm not just going to pull Zillow's number and say that's the, list price or anything like that, right? I forget the exact stat. The former CEO of Zillow just listed their personal property in California for, it was something like $10 million more than his estimate or something crazy like that. So that just goes to show you how accurate this estimate is, okay? So um, I'm just gonna do some casual research online to see what are the um, uh, value estimators saying, okay? Um, then I'm gonna to go to FMLS, and if you see this main screen here, you can see um, the street name. I just put Claire Rose. Then it, thanks. Then I went to the left here, and um, I clicked on all these buttons. Active, active under contract, coming soon, pending, hold, withdrawn, expired, closed. Um, I wanna see <clears throat> um, everything that, that MLS has got to say about this street, okay? Then, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the results. Okay. So here, what I've seen is there's three properties. Let's just do a really quick look at where this home is. You can click on the address for that. Now, oftentimes you might just be able to search the neighborhood and that'll give you everything you need to know. Okay. Um, in terms of, you know, because especially if the home is, you know, uh, relatively similar to other homes nearby, right? So if you look, this home is off Glen Arrow, which is probably one of the most prestigious streets in, in the city, right? It's over in Sandy Springs. Chastain is um, right here. You can see. By the way, I have a, a townhome available for sale, right? Um, where would that be? Right around here, it's in very good condition, freshly painted. Um, Y'all are all on mute. I can't get any laughs or nothing. I don't want you to hear me breathing hard, trying to run and listen to you. <laughs> so Chastain Park is right, um, is right here. See that? Okay, so you're inside the perimeter. You are in. I don't see map. what you're showing. Oh, you don't see the map? I mean, I see the manor, but you said Chastain Park is right here, and I thought you were showing a showing a map or something. Oh, I was. Did you not see that? I didn't see the map. I didn't either. Uh, okay, I don't know how that works then. Um, so basically, I clicked on the street address, and um, I'm just trying to figure out where this home is. Okay. So if you click on the street address, it'll bring bring up a Google map. And then you can just kind of look around in all the directions and see what's going on, right? Where the highways, where's the hospitals, is there any parks nearby? You're just trying to get an idea of where it's at. So if you look closely, I know you guys can't see this. It's, it's not so critically important, okay? Do you have multiple screens, Bill? Yeah. Okay, that's why, because you're, you're sharing one of the screens. So that's why we can't see the other one. This is, it, this is not particularly in, that important, okay? Okay, all it right. It looks like Clear Ridge is a one street neighbor, or actually has a, it's a neighborhood that's got, um, Clear Rose is the primary street, and then there's a, one additional street called Chestnut Rose, okay? So what I'm trying to do is trying to figure out what's going on with these houses, right? So I also may go to Chestnut Rose, 
because honestly, oh, it looks like if I go to um, Claire Rose, I can see Tiller Walk is the name of the neighborhood. See that? Tiller Walk. So then I make go, go back and I'm constantly learning more about the neighborhood. So I, now I can stop the street name because that might limit my search a little bit. And I go to Tiller Walk on the neighborhood. So now I got a couple of more pieces of data to evaluate, okay? So I'm gonna go to the agent single line display really fast. And I'm gonna see that you have a number of things here. So immediately I know that here's a withdrawn for $2.8 million. And we have a closed home for $1.4 million. What that tells me is the prices are, are, are all over the place. And I'm probably not gonna do, be able to do this without going into some, into some homes, right? So what I know here is that whoever owns 5.1 or 515 Chestnut Rose, okay? They attempted to sell their home for $2.8 million and it didn't work, okay? It was withdrawn, okay? So it was on the market, um, came onto the market 11 27 of 2018. Okay. Wow, you see the original price? What? You yeah. see the original list price? 3.3, wow. exactly. Wow. So that was on the market for uh, about 13 months, unsuccessful. Okay, withdrew the price. See this, do not contact the sellers. Yeah, of course not. So 2.8, too much. That ain't the right price, most likely. Right. Here's another property expired. What do we know about expired listings? Expired listings, more than likely, price is too high. Okay. So this home was listed on 5 14 2019. Okay. And expired six months later. Okay. It started at 1.995 and they didn't adjust the price. Okay. Now, I'm not going to price a home like this without going inside some of the other nearby homes, just so you know. If the home was listed for 300 and it's in a bunch of neighbor, it's in a neighborhood where all the houses look the same, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable pricing it without going inside. This is, there's too much money on the line here, okay? Um, I'm just gonna give you kind of, I just want you to listen to my mindset around the, 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 the process, okay? So this home, it is, I think it is fair to say that there's not a single person of the 8 billion people in the universe that, want to, that are willing to pay 1.995 for this home. Too much. It's a pretty home, it's in a great area. Look at that great front yard. It ain't worth 1.995, got it? Okay, it's been available for the whole world to see for six months and not a single person took advantage of it. Make sense? Okay. All right, let's go back. What else can we learn? What we can learn is 5475 Claire Rose closed. So now we're seeing some of the closings, right? This property closed. If you go down to the very bottom, you can see the listing agent and all their contact information, buyer's agent and all their contact information, okay? This property um, was listed for 1.7, uh, I'm sorry, this property was listed for, yeah, um, List price $1,870,000, $1,870,000, okay? S eight days on the market, and it sold for one seven seven five. okay? And the seller and paid $16,400 in closing cost, okay? So here's, a, here's a, an interesting, let, let, let's, let's do a little analysis here, okay? Would you say that was properly priced? No. Why not? Well, they dropped off like 5% of the sales price, right? Um, Plus they pay a concession. I think yes. I think yes also. So keep in mind about, uh, about two thirds of sellers are gonna pay closing costs. Yeah. And that, that stat is updated every, uh, every quarter through chart masters. So paying a concession of closing costs is not out of, the, is not out of line. 
closing costs for this type of property are probably um, 50 grand. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of closing costs. Okay. So paying 16 grand isn't that it's a drop in the bucket really. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but it is. Um, I would say a good price is one that gets a contract, right? So 1.87 was close enough that it got activity quickly. It got good exposure and it got what it really wanted, which was a buyer, right? Now, was it, was a buyer willing to pay 1.87? Didn't appear to be because the, the winner paid 1.77. Make sense? So then I'd go into this home and I'd go into the tax records and I would say, uh, or I would look at the pictures, right? Because presumably I've either, I've either been inside or I'm going to go inside um, the subject property and I'm going to take really good notes. I might even take some pictures if they let me. Right. A new, a new set. Uh, the condition may have been good too. Right. So we're going to go and look in, in the, in the pictures, right? So we're going to look and we're going to see, um, you know, hang on, I've got too many things up here. So we're going to look to see, you see how they have the doors open with the pictures. Like you have to do a little fancier stuff when you got a big listing like this, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. Everything is nice and clean, well-placed, lots of light, right? Nice kitchen. I mean, it, this, is, this is top of the line, right? So you want to compare what does the subject property in terms of finish look like in comparison to this? The subject property could be a hell of a lot more impressive but the subject property could also be less impressive. What we know is that this place, the, the argument is it's worth 1.77. Make sense? So now we need to then look at, um, hang on. How do I get that down? Okay, now we want to go back and look to see numbers of beds and baths, right? How large is it? What kind of land is it on? That first one we looked at was on one acre. This is on 0.6 of an acre, 0.62 of an acre. Read through the descriptions, right? How much are the taxes? Are the taxes abnormally high, abnormally low, et cetera? So basically what you're, uh, what you're learning is that this home, the market says it's worth 1.77. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is 5450 Claire Rose. Okay, that home was listed for 175. Four days on the market. And it closed for 1704970. I wonder where they came up with that number. Cash buyer, wouldn't that be nice? Four days, guys. Holy moly, eight days on the market, four days on the market. And wow. Go in there and sell that place, man. <laughs> okay, this is a popular neighborhood. Right? Look at this place. This place is sweet looking. If yeah, that's not, gorgeous. If, it's, if, it's, if it has the right price, right? That's right. <laughs> that's right. See, that's the interesting thing is you would say, hey, let's say you got a perfectly priced property. I'm sorry, let's say you have a perfect home in terms of condition. Everything looks marvelous. And the comps would suggest it should sell for 1.7 and you've got a list price of 3 million. Guess how many people are gonna buy it? None. That goes back to what we were talking about yesterday with, hey, we got a stock of GE that's available for $25. Well, I don't really care if you're trying to sell your stock for $25. It ain't worth anywhere close to that right? The market says it's worth 20. It, the market says it's worth seven. Right. So I'm not paying 25 for it. And you say, well, I paid 40 for it. I said, I don't give a damn what you paid for it. Right? The fact of the matter is, is the market suggests it ain't worth that. Right? And like we've been saying for days, um, the evidence and the statistics are going to show you everything you need to learn. Right? Because if this place was worth two million bucks, most likely somebody would have come out of the woodwork and paid two million for it. 
right? But it ain't it's working. Beautiful. Right. It's, it's beautiful. One point seven seven five or whatever that number is. One seven zero four. Right. So you can look to see how many bedrooms and baths are there. How large is it? How large of a piece of land is it on? See what I'm saying? So based on like I haven't seen any pictures anew of the place you're talking about, but it seems like the ones that are selling are in that one seven area now, or close to one eight area. But you need to look at the acreage. You need to look at the footage. You need to look at the level of finish. You need to look at what else is on the market, which we'll get to in a second. So here's another one. Okay. So this is 520 Chestnut Rose. That's on that other street. Okay. This is a good bit bigger house. It's a thousand square feet bigger. Okay. Read through those descriptions. By the way, if I had an opportunity to have a listing like this, I would call every buyer's agent and listing agent. I would call Bobby Schmidt. I would call Michael Sr. And then say, hey, my name is Bill Linkwald. I have the best home on the market in Tiller Walk. Guess why? Because there ain't any other homes in Tiller Walk right now. I got a new listing on Tiller Walk. I, look, I see that you do some business in Tiller Walk, and I just want to give you a private tour. When would you like to meet me? Right? I suspect you work with buyers and sellers in the area, and I want you to know about this property. How can I help you get more information about it? How many listing agents you think are doing that? Probably not that many. How many, how many uh, upper end luxury buyers? Nice. Huh. I want one. Oh, cool. Hang on. Okay, I'll be with you in a second, okay? Um, uh, well, what's that? You, that was my daughter. Uh, are, you, are you going the extra mile? to um, expose the property to the people who most likely will be working with those agents. Or, I'm sorry, those buyers, right? Because you tell Bobby Schmidt, you say, hey, I got a new listing. You got any buyers that, that you know, maybe missed out on the last one or have been wanting to live in this neighborhood and these kind of things? You could sell this home instantly, okay? This home sold in 39 days. That's pretty remarkable for a property in this price range, okay? This one just closed two weeks ago, 1.4. Okay, does that mean the market is, is, is dying? No. Okay, it was listed for 1.5, sold for 1.455. Was that a good price? Good enough. Got somebody in the door. Make sense? See how important photos are? I want to live there. <laughs> that front yard's a little too hilly for me. Just kidding. I'd live there. I'd sell it for one. I want to live there. To find something on the lot yard. Um, See, so somebody pick, hired a drone photographer. Doesn't this look nice? It's a, I would say it's a little bit more um, antiquated than the last couple we've seen. Uh -huh. It's a little bit more old fashioned. I, I it, like this is a picture that I would expect to see in a four or five hundred thousand dollar house. To be honest. Yeah, they need to update the paint. It's the paint. Right. That that yellow is like 2006. <laughs> right. And and these chair, I mean like there's just this home doesn't appear to be as yeah, expensive, right? And the right. tile too? The tile Say that the again. Floor. The tiles on the floor? The yeah. tiles. Yeah. yeah, that's not, you know. Look at this. 1.5 million dollar tile. Look at that. Carpet, tile, wood. Mhm. Mm Green, yellow, old white, chairs that you'd expect to see in a retirement home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The tiles are really bad. I would see you know even from saying? the pictures, you can see it. Yeah. So somebody that I mean, look at this. This is old school. Oh wow. That's like a neon light, right? Gold knobs, mismatched. It's hard to see with the light, but that looks like this looks different than that. See that? Yeah, the bronze. Yeah. So I, I'm saying all that to say, don't, don't just look at the price. Like this is old school. Somebody, if you can afford a one and a half million dollar house, um, you, you may, hang on, maybe can you show me a picture of what you were talking about? Uh, not everyone can update. I'd sell it for what it needs to be sold for. That's why it didn't sell for 1.7. That's why it sold for 1.4. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's gonna have to come in here and throw a bunch of cash at it. 
not, you're right. Not everyone can update. And I, and honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put 300 grand into a house to sell it. I'd sell it for what it's worth. Yep. And the market is telling you that if your home looks like this, you're not going to get one seven or one eight for it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So you yes. guys, <laughs> nice I mean, God, good God. I got light, nicer washer and dryer than that in my rental home. <laughs> my rental home's worth $150,000. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh, what's up with this? Oh, boy, that's bad. See what I'm saying? Oof, my good. Goodness. I just got the birds going there. Huh? Nice. <laughs> so uh, look how important this is. You see what I'm saying? Oh my goodness! You gotta, you got to get that gone. Woo. See? <laughs> That's nice. They should have that as one of the leading pictures. Look at this tile, this ceiling. This is a one point five million dollar house. Right. Look at this old green countertop and stuff. I mean, look, I'm not trying to, I'm, it is what it is. My point is- I didn't even know they put those in the house to me. Right. You know, yeah. Right. She comes out. I guess they're thinking location, location, location. They are. Maybe. You can't get a better location they, than yeah. this. Right. Okay. And they got a, I mean, phenomenal exterior. Okay. Right. But the fact of the matter is it's not worth 1.7 or 1.8. Okay, so let's just pretend that you've been in this house and it looks a little closer to the 1.7, 1.8 sale and less like the one we just looked at, okay? And all of the um, uh, reporting from all these other websites is saying 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, something like that. So now you're starting to think, okay, it's probably in that 1.7, 1.8 neighborhood. So then I would go out and I would put in the address and I would say, how about one mile from the address? What's the address one more time? Uh, hang on, let me go back. All right, 5485 Claire Rose. See how it auto-populated? Oops. Okay. And now I've got 121 matches. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be, um, I don't, let's see. I want to start getting a little bit more picky. So let's say, for example, I want um, one, one million, $1.2 million and higher. See that? Did I do that right? What happened there? Did you have a uh, 12 million or higher or is that one point? Oh yeah, it's got too many zeros. Yeah. Sorry. All right, now I'm down to 59 properties. Okay, so let's, let's say for example that the home has a basement or the home has a pool or something like that. Something that's gonna help me identify um, the, uh, um, that's going to eliminate some properties. So basically I could go in here and, and if oh God, if I, if I was tasked with pricing a property like this and I'm, I could make, yeah, I could make 40, 50, $60,000 from selling this and I could potentially make it in a couple of days. You better believe I'm going to spend a lot of time coming through these homes, maybe going in and out of a bunch of them. Bill, right. could you could you also limit the the time frame? You know, like the one eighty days on the other side of the of the. Yeah, the I saw that. I, for for this kind of property, I think I'd be at one eighty just to. Okay. Just to see, you know, let's let's try that. Actually, I, we're we're just kind of we're just kind of um. We're just kind of messing around here for a second. So let's say that we want to um, go to ninety days for all of these. One hundred and eighty days might be outdated for any of the properties that we're looking at. Yeah, you you could go out a little further if there's a if if you can't find that many sales. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So we got forty two results. 
So by the way, these are the listing agents of your competition. But guess what? They could also be working with your future buyer. So I might call every one of them and say, hey, I'm Bill Linkwald, I'm with Keller Williams, and I have this new listing, um, and I'd like to tell you about it. Can I send you some pictures, or would you like to see it in person? How can I help you? Do you have any buyers that might be working with that? Oh, you know what we could also do is go to um, do like this. So let's say we're going to look from 1.2 to 2.5, something like that. Ah, yeah. Okay. So this, to, to, to help you, here, here's the point of doing this search, is that you have to put your, when you're pricing a property, you have to put yourself in the buyer's shoes, okay? What is the buyer? What, what other properties could they pick? So let's say, Anu, you're ready to put this home on the market, let's say within the next two weeks, okay? Let's just say this, these are the homes your buyer is probably gonna be competing with, okay? So for example, if you said the price should be 1.7, guess what? It better be nicer than this, okay? Incredible build to suit opportunity. So this is somebody's flat, you know, a piece of land that a builder is gonna come in and build on, right? So you might call the guy and say, hey, do you, you know, how big of a home are you planning to build there? Property also marked as a lot at 625,000. So the lot itself is 625,000. Wow. So that's probably a teardown. That's not, that's not really a good comp. Um, but this one, okay, this one, this one's priced at 1.695. And by the way, I know you can't see this, but it's a little closer to Chastain. Okay, so you might say, if I want to get one seven for my subject property, now it's also off of Powers Ferry Road. And I got to tell you, if I could afford a $1.6 million house, I wouldn't be anywhere near Powers Ferry Road. I'd be off in the woods somewhere. Right? But you got to beat, the only way you're going to sell that home for 1.7 or 1.8 is if it's nicer than this one. Does that make sense? Because this property, a buyer can buy for 1.6. Now it's got some outdated features as well. Right? So it's all gonna, it's all gonna, what you're trying to do when you're comping a house is basically finding a couple of properties that are more impressive and finding a couple properties that are less impressive. And that's gonna include the size, the land, the price, the area all of that kind of stuff, the number of beds and baths, whether it has a basement, what, what kind of finishes does it have, how long has it been on the market, all these kind of things, right? So what, what, can we, what do we know about this particular property? We say, oh my gosh, it's a nice property for 1.695. Well, is it? Let's see, okay? If you click on um, this link right here, I'm sorry, uh, this link right here, listing history, I don't know if you guys can see that, see this, but it pops up and it tells you what's been going on with the listing. So this listing came uh, onto the market on October 28th of last year. And the price has not changed since, right? So that's November, December, January, February, March. That's five months that the whole world could have bought this home for 1.65, 695. And we know that if it's, if, if it's, um, you know, we would assume that the if, if it's well-priced and it's in great shape, it's going to sell very, very quickly. We have evidence of that, right? Well, yeah. this property may not be worth one one nine six five. So, right? Bill, I got a question. Isn't the doesn't the chart master say that properties over nine hundred k typically takes a longer time to sell? Like, I know we've seen evidence in this neighborhood that it takes four and eight days, but but typically doesn't it take longer to sell? So it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that it would be outdated or, or overpriced, right? Um, <clears throat> that is, yes. The answer to your question directly is yes. You're only looking for one buyer. Um, however, if I, if, 
if uh, let's say this place was worth one and a half, I probably would have submitted an offer at one and a half and it probably wouldn't be available anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? It is a beauty contest. Um, so what can you tell us? Were the four days anomalies? I, I don't know. Now I would, when I'm sitting in front of the prospect, I would say, here, here's some of the stats. We got to understand that um, if you're looking to sell this home between let's say one and a half and 2 million, there are currently X number of properties within a mile or in the same school district as, I mean, most of the people that can afford this house are sending their kids to private school anyway. So the school district is a little less important in my opinion, right? However, um, you, you need to help them understand the market. Hey, between one and a half and 2 million, the stats say this, there are currently 15 homes you would be competing against. Okay. And here's what they look like. Okay, and here's how large they are, and here's where they're located, and here's how long they've been on the market, and here, here, here's how, uh, what a, what a, what a, how high the level of finish is, right? And, by the way, in this, in the one, between one and a half and two million, if we go back here, we could say there have only been, um, or, or actually here, we, we do it, we could do it this way. So let's say we get rid of the active, we get rid of all this, just to illustrate a point to you. So how many of these homes have sold in the last um, 90 days? Only five. And what did they sell for? Right, so you wanna look to see, oh, here's a home on Dupree Drive, right? Let's look at that, that sold for one nine. Is that bigger or more impressive or prettier, or got better finishes? right? Betsy Aker, she's one of the top agents in the city, right? She did, she, she's got a, a lot of the Coca-Cola relocation um, relationships, right? She'd be one of my first calls. Hey, Becky, new man in town. It's Bill Linkwald. I got this fancy listing. You got a buyer? Let's, let's go to, to lunch and talk about it. You see what I'm saying? Wouldn't it be nice if Becky Akers had a buyer for you and all you had to do is tell her about it? Oh this one God. was 76 days on the market, right? That uh, one you just looked at. Uh, 76, exactly. Yeah. So if we just take a quick look here, that one was 39. That one was 20. That one was four, although it was new construction. So that's uh, that's not worth looking at. That they just yeah. put it on the market so that they could take it off the market, so they could put it pending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting looking house. Hundred and thirty nine days, right? So what's active? What is it competing against? What's pending? What have buyers chosen as the winners? Right? What's the best of the available homes, and what's sold? And meanwhile, you got to pretend like your listing is on that list, right? So Anu, let's say you're a buyer and you can afford a million and a half or a $2 million home, right? Why would I choose the home you're talking about? Well, I'm only going to choose the home you're talking about if I review all the sales data and I confirm that I think that is a fair price. If I review all the pending data and I confirm that I think that's a fair price. If I look at every other option that's available within my immediate needs, and I think that your, your home is the best value, right? And even if I'm off by a hundred grand, if it's pretty, it'll probably go, right? That's the, I listed for one eight and I sold for one seven, no big deal. But I would go in to, with them and say, look, I need you to understand that the, uh, the, here are the stats for homes in your, for your, your area and your price range. Like there's not a lot of buyers out there that can afford a 1.8 or $1.9 million home, right? Buying a $300,000 house is a whole lot different. Does that make sense? Yeah, I had a question, Bill. Yeah. So you had mentioned before about one of the, um, one of the locations, uh, you, would not live, you would not live on that road. So I, it prompted me to think, so if you had a listing and it was on a very busy street, I'm assuming that powers, whatever road was very busy. 
And so how would that impact your pricing? Would that, you know, cause you to lower the price then? Or would you still put the same price if your market analysis said 1.7? I think it's just it's a factor just like all the other things are a factor, right? If, if you had two identical houses, one was in a neighborhood and one was on a main street, I think most people would pick the one in a neighborhood. Okay. But it, you, you can't, um, I learned a lesson very, very early in my business, right? It, and it depends on what is, what's sold, right? And what's available, right? Um, I learned a, an important lesson very early in my career and I was meeting a person at a new construction neighborhood and I was a, a, a pretty early and my client hadn't shown up yet. And so I was um, getting walked around the, the community by the salesperson. And uh, so she showed me the first floor plan and then she showed me the next floor plan. Well, the next floor plan was smaller. And in my personal opinion, it was choppier, right? The rooms are smaller, it was less open you know, and, and I, and it was more expensive. And I asked her, I said, you know, I was, I was stupid. And I asked her, I said, why would anyone choose this if they could have this for less? And she looked at me and she said something really, really cool. She said, um, Bill, some people like salmon and some people don't like salmon. If you know, you see what I'm saying? Some people like look, living on a main street. Some people don't care, right? If the home, if all the stats in the world would say that home was 1.8 and you said 1.8 and you said, ah, it's on a main street. And I said 1.7, they say sold. I need to go out of the You can't assume anything. You just gotta ask the questions. Hey, you know, uh, oftentimes, um, you know, these custom built homes, uh, you know, in the ones and twos and all that, they, they're on, they're on main streets. You know, how do you feel about living on a main street? Huh? If you find the right property, it's well priced. I'll live on a main street. Great. Ain't no way in hell I'm living on a main street. All right. Well, don't show many homes on a main street because if you do, you're not listening. And let me tell you something. Um, I'm make a really big generalization here. Pretty much anybody that can afford a 1.7 to $2 million home is in some position in their professional life of, of, um, of, of leadership or management or ownership or something like that. They generally have people reporting to them and they generally don't tolerate people that aren't listening. Does everyone agree with that? Yep. You have to understand where these people are coming from, right? If, I mean, I, I mean, I have, I have people that report to me and that I, that I serve and that I coach and these kind of things. Like I'm used to, I'm used to making requests of somebody else and that's getting done. Right. And so I'm naturally going to feel that way when I get into, into a professional interaction with somebody. Right. This kind of goes back to what we were talking about the other day about your competition being um, the Ritz Carlton. Okay. Do you think that a person that owns a $1.7 million house, do you think they stay, you think they'd be more likely to stay at the Ritz Carlton when they travel or holiday in? Um, I'm going to assume silence means Ritz Carlton. Okay. Well, guess what? Okay, Bill, I don't own a $1.7 million house and I won't stay at the holiday Inn. <laughs> there you go. And I'll tell you what, I, and, and, I, and I say this in all seriousness, if I mean, I, 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 I could probably afford a million dollar house and I've never stayed in the Ritz and I'm never going to stay in the Ritz. And I would probably, and oftentimes the holiday Inn is nice to me. Like I think staying at a hotel and spending a ton of money is a waste of money. Personally. Oh, you're missing out. <laughs> right. So my point is, is that, um, you know, you, you feel that is a good use of your money and you are absolutely entitled to think that way. And, I personally don't agree with that. So that's why they made both of us, right? And so you gotta ask the question, tell me how you feel about that, right? So I can't see how nice the place is if my eyes are closed, I'm there to sleep, right? So everybody, everyone thinks differently. So that's, a, that's an interesting way you said that. Like, 
I'm not going to stay at the Ritz personally, but guess what? Most of the people that own these kind of homes would. And if you come in with a shoddy presentation and not prepared, they're going to see right through you. <laughs> the reason they're able to afford a $1.7 million is because they don't stay there. <laughs> uh, see, a third opinion. What do you know? All right. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> well, we can, we can spend all day debating this one. Um, that's the beauty of life is we get to earn the money. We get an opportunity to earn as much money as we want and we get an opportunity to spend it however we want. Make sense? Anyone want to say anything else? Was this helpful? All right. I'm going to quit the sharing real fast. Yes. Okay. Uh, yep. So I, I think it, it, we're, we'll do this again in the future on a, on a home that's a little bit more uh, kind of predictable, if you will, um, and uh, help. And I'd love to hear kind of your, you know, have it be a bit more interactive. Um, but my hope is that you kind of got an idea of how, what the, what the um, process is. So let me, let me summarize for you. Okay. Process number one is do some preliminary research online. Okay. Tax records automated sites, all that stuff. Process number two is going into the FMLS and um, I would look up their tax record, right? Not that it has a whole lot of impact, but I, I'd kind of like to know what they paid for it, right? I just want to have that in the back of my mind. Um, I want to ask questions like, what have you done to improve the property since you bought it, right? And they say, oh, well, I put a $75,000 pool in the back and I changed out all the knobs and um, we got new HVAC systems and all these kind of things. Okay, point taken. I don't know if that's increasing the value or not, but we'll see, right? If you go put a $75,000 pool in a $300,000 home in a neighborhood that's already got a pool, it's probably not worth 75 grand, right? If all of your neighbors have big flat backyards and you got a big pool there, that may be a, a detractor to people. They may say, well, God, it's going to cost me 75 grand to get rid of this thing or I'm just flat out not going to buy it, right? So then we go into FMLS and we try to see what's going on in the neighborhood, what's going on in the elementary school district, what's going on in the middle school district or high school district if you need to go out that far based on the type of home it is, right? Um, you want to look for homes that are roughly the same size, roughly, you know, does it have a basement, does it not, roughly the same number of beds and baths, that kind of stuff, right? Then you want to look, then once you have an idea of what that number should be, I would go test it. And what I mean by testing it is by looking at the actives, right? If this, if my home at the price that I'm thinking um, were to be an active listing and it was competing against this group of properties, which one would I want to go see? Or which one do I think stands out the most, right? Because if it doesn't stand out, they're not going to go get it. It doesn't matter how much marketing the listing agent does. That's the example we talked about the other day, right? You can get gas now for two bucks a, a gallon. What happened if I sold it for three bucks a gallon? Would anyone buy it? No. What if I, what if I took out front page ads and all the papers and said gas $3 a gallon and had fire, we said fireworks wasn't a good idea, but we got balloons and blah, blah, blah coming out the top of the gas station telling people that gas is available for three bucks a gallon. Would you buy it? No. So if it's not priced right, it doesn't matter how much marketing you do. You're just telling the world how overpriced it is, right? Same thing. Let's say an iPad, brand new iPad in its packaging, the whole deal, you know, an iPad's worth, I don't know, let's say a thousand bucks. That's what the market says an iPad's worth. No, it's less than that. But let's just say it's a thousand. If I want to sell it for 1500, nobody's going to buy it. I say, well, hey, it's never been touched. It's in its packaging. It's been, un it's an open. I don't care. It ain't worth fifteen hundred. Does that make sense? A classic. Yeah, it's a classic, right? Well, it'll be a classic in like fifteen years, but it ain't a classic today. Thank you. Um, so then I want to check it. What have solds? Ha what have? What's happening with solds? What's happening with actives? What's happening with pendings? Do I still believe that my price initially is right? And you might start to fluctuate. Let's say you're. Uh, it's somewhere between you know, two ten and two twenty. Okay, well now I see this, it's probably closer to 210. Now I see that one, it's probably closer to 220. So you're constantly kind of wavering. 
And then you're evaluating this up until the very last moment when you put that sign in the yard to say, hey, I think it's gonna be 225, but I know you're finishing up the paint and that kind of stuff, and it's gonna take two weeks to get this home listed. It may, my, my recommendation may change over the next two weeks based on what goes under contract, what sells, and what comes back onto the market or what comes onto the market. So it's a constant evaluation because at the end of the day, you're competing. You're competing with every other option that a buyer may consider, period. And if you don't appear to be the best value, they're not going to buy your home. Simple. Does that make sense? Any thoughts? Yes. Yes. Yes, Bill. And um, before we go, um, before we leave this call, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about something completely different, if that's possible. Yeah, um, go ahead. So I am doing the referral uh, contract. I know you sent me some comments back. And uh, so I need to sign it before I send it over to the, the other broker? Yeah. Okay. And then I can just, okay, then that's all I need. Okay. Um, oh. Stephanie, would I uh, recommend a seller putting an appraisal on the market? Yeah, honestly, if, if it was, if this price, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I would probably get an appraisal for anything above a million for sure. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Say, so look, Mr. Seller, I, I'm pretty sure I have a pretty good idea of what, what it would take to sell this home, but I'm willing to pay for an appraisal because it's just so important. It's just that important. There's a lot of money at stake. And I might have them pay for the appraisal on the front end and then credit back to them at closing. And I personally pay for it myself. If, um, if it's a very unique home, um, if, if it's a townhome and all the townhomes look the same, there's no point in an appraisal on the front end at least. Okay. Any okay. other questions? All right, everyone, we'll take a little break and I'll see you back at 11 o'clock. Okay.